know, I'd, I'd love to sit up here and give you coach speak about how focused I am on the game, and I don't think about all that other stuff, but match the bunch of crap. I mean, I'm fired up and excited and, and can't wait. Let's not – I know what the narrative may be out there, so let's forget about and lose the, uh, the narrative of – he hasn't played a football game in two or three years, and he was walking up and down the halls like Uncle Rico talking about what he did back in the day as a quarterback. He played quarterback a few, a couple months ago. He's played in a college football game a hell of a lot more recently than anybody on our pro, anyone on our team. Yeah, uh, Jason was disappointed. I call, he came in my office yesterday. I love Jason. Like Jason comes in my office probably twice a day just to pop in and say hello and sit down and shoot the bull. And uh, he came in yesterday, and, and no one has worked harder to put himself in the position that he's in than Jason. I'm mean, so excited for our players, for the opportunity to go out and play in williams Bryce Stadium this week. Uh, so excited for our fans to be able to be back in williams Bryce Stadium. Never will I ever, not that I did before, but I will never take uh, college football for granted and, and what makes it special. Uh, Trey Atkins and Wyatt Campbell both practiced today. They should be fine for Saturday night, which is uh, really good to see. Uh, Luke was out there, uh, didn't really do much. Doubt he's going to be 100% uh, Saturday night, but he was out there at practice. Hank Manos uh, is probably doubtful. Uh, for Saturday night. Don't know if he's quite going to be ready for, uh, to make it back. And then Rick Sandage is the one that will definitely be out for Saturday, but hope to hope to get him back soon. So I know uh, obviously the topic of conversation, uh, what everyone is here today and wants to talk about is our uniforms. And what we're uh, – credit Fink on that one. He actually uh, mentioned doing that. So, so very good, Fink. Is our uniforms. Uh, we're going to wear white helmets, garnet jerseys, and white Part pants. I mean, I want to coach somewhere where you have uh, passionate fans that are, that are into it, and we certainly have unbelievably passionate fans here at Carolina yeah, that won't be afraid to voice their displeasure for decisions that we don't make. Uh, and that's just, you know, that's part of it. I'm not going to, you know, run into the locker room and all of a sudden jump on Twitter and look at my mentions. I can assure you that after the game, um, maybe after a win. <laughs> yeah, but standpoint, just what's the realistic timeline of when he might be able to actually put on some pads and practice with you guys? I would hope, uh, if not this week, certainly next week. You know, I mean, I uh, feel pretty confident saying that Joyner and, and Van and, and Brooks – if there's a top three, would be your top three right now. That's why they're listed as the starter. We're not asking him to go win the football game. We'll never ask our quarterbacks to do that. We want to ask him to get us in and out of the huddle cleanly and efficiently without pre-snap penalties. Let's hand the ball to our running backs. Let's get the ball to our playmakers uh, on offense at wide receiver, tight end, and running back. Uh, offensive line, let's do a great job of running the football and protecting the quarterback, and, and let's go play. So we're not asking Zeb to go win the game on Saturday night. We're asking him to operate the offense efficiently, and we feel like he does the best job of that right now from an offensive standpoint. Um, so I actually talked to Beamer yesterday, but you kind of get a feel for things as the week plays out beforehand. So like Saturday and Sunday, I kind of saw like how it was going with the reps, like how they were broken up and everything. So. I kind of had a feeling how it was going to go, so I kind of prepared myself for it. But uh, I'm not going to lie, I mean, it hurt just because there was times I would just think, like, man, did all this work I put in since February kind of just amount to nothing. I didn't take it negatively just because, I mean, I love to compete, and that's one of our core values here. So I love Zeb, and I hope he does the best. I'm not going to sit here and hope that he does bad or gets hurt or anything like that. That's not me. I hope he succeeds because that means the team's going to succeed. Um, I'm not sure how the competition is going to go when Luke gets back. Like I said, like I just said, I mean, one of our main core values is compete. So, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I would say probably just he he controls things a little bit better just being an older guy and coming from Iowa State and North Dakota State big time programs that have that have emphasized the communication and everything like that. But I don't think that it was a, I don't think that it was a drastic difference. But they're going to put the guy that they feel most comfortable out there to win the game for us, and that just happened to be said. say that I'm a really positive person. Like, it didn't really – I haven't really let it affect me on the field in any way, and I haven't let it affect my teammates in any first way. Time. Um, someone who's confident in the pocket, uh, who who's know how to control the offense, obviously a veteran, um, was a coach, so he kind of knows the offense in and out. So uh, that definitely gives us an advantage on the offensive side. And um, just like I said earlier, his presence, his leadership, um, 
just he's the guy who walks in and you just recognize him for some you. reason. I'm definitely excited. Like you said, the uh, fans definitely give us another uh, level of juice. Um, so it's definitely uh, exciting to have them, and especially for a home game. Then, um, yeah, it's like um, ready to start the Beamer era the right way.